all of my players are from my work, including the rogue. First red flag is when she brought in her demon slayer katana, but we all knew the anime and thought her full cosplay was neat, but didn't fit her character. She looked like and described a winged tiefling. She said she made a drow thief, but over time used abilities that no thief can actually use. I was getting kind of annoyed that she was an experienced player. It took a lot of explaining on what can and can't be done, and on what a drow and a tiefling are. She didn't even have her finished character sheet. That's fine. Now we get into the horror I missed behind my DM screen while I was in the bathroom. Here's a list of offenses against the barbarian she targeted. It goes as follows. Number one, stealing his dice, phone, and his pocket knife as a joke. Using said knife to cut a smiley face into the notepaper on my table that had no cover. Unwanted flirting and contact with the barbarian. Mind you, in front of his soon-to-be wife and, lastly, holding the katana that she'd been flailing all over the place to his neck when he, as the barbarian, threatened to kill her character if she didn't stop. Guys, I think we just broke a record. Like, what do we have here? We've got, we've got anime weeb, we've got edgelord, we've got IRL threats, we have unwanted flirting. Hell, let's toss on property damage to the pile. Why not? This should be an achievement of some kind. Most malarkey fitted into a story in the shortest amount of time. I mean, it's not necessarily a good achievement, but hey, she achieved it nonetheless. So a longtime friend of mine who has played in several of my campaigns, as well as me being in several of their campaigns, we recently had a huge falling out, and I feel it is super unjustified. I have been playing D&D since February of 2018. He has been playing since October of 2018. Both of us were players in a mutual friends campaign. That mutual friend ended up moving away, and I took up being the group's dungeon master. And so far, I haven't had many complaints over how I've done it, and if people have had complaints, I've been open to criticism and change accordingly. And I have run four full campaigns now. In that time, my friend, we'll call him Drew, also took up DMing. He wanted to run a game where the essential premise was, I have no clue how to DM, I'm making it up as I go, don't take it too seriously. Fine, on board, I guess, let's go. We finish the campaign, he has a lot more understanding of what to do and what not to do. We move on to him making a second campaign of his, told us it would be an open-ended one where you guys can make up the campaign story. I'm on board, let's go. But instead, he started hardcore railroading us into only encounters he wanted to do, and none of our choices affected them, not in the slightest. At one point, we had an overall group stealth roll average of 35 due to everyone rolling a nat 20 with Pass Without Trace. And we were spotted immediately upon coming into view of the city because he didn't want this to be an assassin military op on his evil mayor or whatever. And rather than just saying, my bad won't happen again, he scraps the whole campaign. Pain. He then says he's gonna run a module instead, so he doesn't have to come up with a story that we're all gonna about. I don't think we were at all. I can't really say how we made him feel. So, we're running Curse of Strahd with a few homebrew tweaks to make it interesting. These tweaks being, you do not gain hit points back on long rest. You only gain your proficiency number of spell slots slash abilities back on a long rest, and you straight up cannot take short rests. Naturally, all of us were against this, as that's absurd for Curse of Strahd, and it took me and two other players two weeks of asking him not to do that because we would not have fun if we ran with those rules. He eventually gives in to you guys and runs the module as it's written. Now I'm playing a goblin and I know that in most settings they're pretty ostracized and a lot of common folk hate them and I was expecting and prepared for some mean comments and unhelpful people and prejudice and stuff but oh boy. Every single NPC the party spoke to wouldn't even allow me to speak under threat of death. If I talked above board, the DM outright ignored me. In combat, I would be targeted by all enemies until unconsciousness because goblins need to be slaughtered. As a resident goblin enjoyer, this makes me very sad. Out of game, I asked if I could sit down and talk to him. He agreed and I voiced my complaints saying, I feel like you're having fun exclusively at my expense and I want to have fun with you and our friends. Now, this wasn't the first time he had done this. In that second campaign, he scrapped early, and a Spelljammer game that he was running at the same time as Cursor Strahd Bi-Weekly, he had gotten immeasurably out of his way to make my character specifically struggle, and would only stop once other party members called him out on it. I told one of my friends, 
who has also been in all of these campaigns alongside me, that I spoke with him and told him how the conversation went. He told me I should call Drew and reiterate all of my points, that I'm not having fun and would like to have fun in the future. So I did. Drew the DM then hangs up on me and sends me a massive hate text saying, I'm a new DM, I'm never going to be as good as Matthew Mercer, so stop expecting me to be perfect all the time. All you do is complain and ruin my fun. Now, I have never asked him for anything in the campaign other than to just have fun. I don't tell him how to world build, I don't tell him how to run combat, I don't tell him how to do anything unless he asks for a rule check, in which case I google it and that's it. This guy is also a fan of Critical Role by the way, so I have no clue why that's who he chose to blame it on. Anyway, my response to him was, I'm not asking you to be a critical role. I'm saying that you're making me feel like crap and that you can only have fun at my expense. It's a game where we're all friends. I want to have fun too, with all of you. And currently, I'm not because you're treating me like crap and it's the only way you seem to enjoy the game. And me calling you out on treating me like crap is making you mad. Also, for anyone who's going to ask, he had been DMing since January of 2019. This event transpired in February of 2023, with several campaigns under his belt. His first one I played in, two he ran for another group, and the other one scrapped partway through, and then the two modules. I'm a new DM just isn't a valid excuse to treat me like crap. So do people hold campaigns to unrealistic standards sometimes? Yeah, not just because of Critical Role, but because of so many things. It could just be a sign of new players who don't understand what goes into DMing. It could be a sign of a simple difference of playstyle. It could be a sign of somebody who's just really trying their best to voice act. Hell, that last one even affects Matt's wife. Glass just broke. <laughs> Where's the Matt Mercer sound effects when you need them? That kind of thing always happens. However, this sort of thing happens too, where people use the Matt Mercer effect as an excuse to just buttress all sort of feedback or criticism. This person isn't holding the DM to unrealistic standards. This person is asking that the DM stop treating their character like garbage and targeting them actively in fights. It's really hard to have fun in a campaign where that is happening. And I get that, oh, they're playing a goblin, so they deserve it. But if goblins are this impossible to play, I don't really understand why the DM allowed it in the first place. This is so blatant unfun, it might as well not be an option. The DM is using thy holy name Mercer as a shield against the obvious fact, or at least what I see as an obvious fact, the fact that the DM just likes targeting this person. They're going out of their way to do so and seem to enjoy it a lot more than a DM probably should, which, yeah, that's combative DMing, which, as we've said many times, is lame DMing, especially when it's targeted at one person specifically for seemingly no damn reason at all. It was bless. The bless spell broke everything. We'll get to that after a backstory. An old friend, let's call him Andrew, invited me to play online with him and some friends as they're leaving a campaign to start a new one. I haven't played in 15 to 20 years because, you know, kids and life, so I'm excited. Player Andrew found a new DM. Early in this quest, my paladin had a horse, so he drove our wagon. I drove it somewhere the party didn't want to go when they weren't paying attention. DM let me do it, he just thought it was funny. Player Andrew had a big problem. I apologize and they just, you know, retconned it away. I have to keep saying sorry for a couple of weeks because Andrew keeps bringing it up. We eventually decide to switch Dungeon Master to player character and start a new quest with another player taking up the DM role. Nice short Eldritch Horror quest with some abandoned mines. I'm a tiefling wild magic sorcerer this time and I'm failing a ton of corruption rolls because I have an abysmal wisdom score. I'm supposed to be getting paranoid and a little crazy. I started collecting dynamite we found and I tied them all together into one big bomb. At the end of the quest, I lit the bomb and let the purple worm eat me. Then I would attempt to thunder step out. The DM makes me roll some stuff but I'm swallowed. Leave the package and teleport out. It almost kills me, two hit points left, but it worked. I blew 103 points of damage out of that big purple bastard. It was the coolest thing I've ever done in game. We won the day and the worst is over and Andrew goes after me again. He said I was stealing from the party but not telling everyone what I found while I was exploring. To top it all off, he said no one enjoys my antics and they didn't like my worm bomb. I asked another player and he said he's heard nothing like that from the rest of the party. 
Third quest, third DM. Andrew is going to be the dungeon master this time. I tried to not play because I felt I was going to get targeted, but by the actual DM this time. But everyone assured me it would be fine. I'm not going to be some glory-seeking dumb paladin or an unpredictable devil wild mage. I made the most helpful character I could. I was going to play a cleric and healer and just help the rest of the party shine. We got into our first real encounter. This is where the bless spell breaks the DM. There were some bad guys staring us down and we're only level 3. There's a hag and some big red devils and an oni with a dog sitting back watching. We fought hard for 3 rounds. My peace cleric is way back with bless on the party and a bond with our 2 marshals. We killed some stuff but eventually the oni came down and just cold coned us all to death. Cool, first fight is a TPK and the night's over. He tells us after it was a dream and we're not dead. We're still talking after the game, and Andrew says he's going to nerf my character. I'm going to have to take more concentration checks to keep spells up. That's cool, I took Warcaster so it shouldn't be a big problem, but this should hurt other casters too. Nope, it, it just affected me. He said the fight was 10% of what he had planned, but my blessed spell with the peace bond made it last the whole night. It became an argument soon after. We went back and forth for a day or so, some things were said, but it all ended when player Andrew deleted the entire Discord room and with it, my ability to talk to most of the other players. Honestly, I hope they're all playing and having fun without me. I kind of just want to share my story, but while I'm here, am I the asshole in this? I know the answer is kind of obvious, but they asked, and I like the tune we play during the segment. So yeah, drum roll please. Not the asshole, like in any of these situations. Now, obviously I could be missing stuff, but taking everything at face, yeah, the DM is definitely the problem here. For starters, the bless spell can get kind of annoying in roleplay moments with players constantly just shouting bless over everything while you're trying to roleplay, but this isn't even in roleplay, this is in combat, and honestly, you're just doing your job as a cleric. The DM just suffered from bad encounter design. If the players are keeping themselves alive and doing a reasonable amount of damage, they should generally progress in the fight. Having a multi-round fight be only 10%, that's bad. That's too long. I mean, maybe in some games that would work, but that's a slog that's gonna get really boring very quickly if you don't spice things up. As a player, this person complained constantly and seemed to get very mad when someone else had any ounce of spotlight. I get spotlight hogs being bad, but this person doesn't seem to be a spotlight hog, they seem to be someone who's just enjoying the game, and you should be enjoying it with them. I love reveling in the moments other people have in my game, it's part of what makes this special. We're a team, we experience this together. OP is definitely not the asshole, but alienating someone for seemingly no reason, that definitely makes Andrew the asshole especially here. DM has 14 years of experience DMing, has been doing solely 5th edition campaigns since the game came out, or at least so we were told. Player 1, me, started one year ago playing D&D, running a Sylvan Gloomstalker. Player 2, been playing D&D for 5 years, running a variant Human Fiend Warlock. Player 3, been playing D&D for 2-3 to three years, playing a Tiefling School of Illusion Bard, that says wizard, what the fuck? Player 4, newish player, running a Bugbear Zealot Barbarian. Player 5, been playing for 5 years as well, running an ASMR Oathbreaker Paladin. The DM presents us with a really cool world setting TLDR during a major battle. The party members, who are parts of different factions, an unknown force, opens a portal to another world, and the party get their memory wiped. No one knows who was allied to who, and, skipping a lot here, they decide to work together to find out what happens so they can reverse whatever the portal thing is. P.S. We are starting at level 3. We spent an entire month working with the DM on a way to create the backgrounds for our characters, considering we don't really know what our backgrounds are. While the DM really took a 180 degree turn later on, this process was actually pretty cool and everyone enjoyed it. During this month, we spent a lot of time making sure that the classes slash races were approved, etc. Without the way, let's get to it. Session 1 goes just fine, no red flags. But session two, we have a pretty tough fight with local bandits who are hiding in some expansive underground ruins. In one part of the ruins, I get a great stealth roll and due to umbral sight, we managed to get the upper hand on a fight, a fight where we were on the edge of our rope. For the next 30 minutes, the DM is acting short with me specifically. I used to have the habit of sometimes letting my character do things without really 
talking about it with the other party members. So till the end of the session, I was worried that that was what I was doing. I sent messages to the other players and they were like, no, you are cool. And you were right, the DM is acting short. We don't know why. So after the session is over, the DM, without leading into it or anything, just sighs and says, Umbral site is broken. We need to find a way to fix it. Otherwise, I may have to ban it. It took me by surprise since that one fight is the only time where Umbral Sight got taken into consideration at all, as the section of the ruins we were exploring had plenty of light to negate the ability. I usually don't argue, but we like spent a month working on the characters, and they went through every part of the character sheet to make sure it worked, so why is this surfacing right now? Either way, no way to argue, they said we'll talk about it after next session and just goes away. In the next two weeks, we talk a few times, and basically the crust of the issue... Anyway, yeah, the problem is the DM doesn't want people cheesing fights. Okay, fair enough, but it's not like I was abusing it. It came into effect once, and it's easily countered by just having light. Dim even works. Even if that's not there, there's smell, there's noise, there's magic, etc. Session 3, with the issue of Umbral Sight in mind, I tried my best to always give myself reasons why I shouldn't bring it up. I tried making it very limited when I thought I could use it. DM was acting fine, then during a fight with the leader of the bandits who turned out to be a fiend, the paladin crits on a smite. To be clear, you state you are going to smite before you roll, and rolls really lucky on a few of the dice and takes the boss bandit down to zero hit points. The fight was pretty tough, and we already had one person down and the rest between one-fourth to two-thirds of their hit points. And to anyone following, with no surprise, the DM goes quiet and starts getting short with the Paladin. At the end of the session, now the same thing happens. The DM, without leading into it, just states that the Paladin crits are overpowered and we may need to remove the extra D8 on Undead slash Fiends and maybe keep crits to the melee attacks. A few days later, he comes back with the following ruling. Humble sight. I get to keep it, but to get the benefit, I must first roll a hard stealth check, so 20 plus. A new roll is needed every time we enter a new room. Mind you, there was only one dark room in three sessions so far, and I am not allowed to get past without a trace. Paladin Smites have no additional damage dice for Fiend slash Undead, bans Upgrade Smite, meaning it's only 2d8 no matter what spell level is used, and Crits on Smites are banned too. Paladin guy gets pretty upset, and the entire table is like, Dude, what? Why are you going so hard on these things? No answer. Later on, one of the other three players reaches out to the DM, and apparently, we picked OP classes, and it's ruining his setting and his world. I think all five of us were pretty stunned. The Paladin sends a message to the DM on behalf of the entire group, that a lot of us put quite a lot of thoughts into these characters, and it's a bit unfair to get these restrictions after the DM did a thorough back and forth with us, and we'd like to try and maybe roll new characters or talk about these issues. The DM replies that we can talk about it after session 4. Last session, aka session 4, we talk a few minutes before the start of the session and DM promises that he won't leave voice channel tonight until we reach a compromise that satisfies everyone. Okay, midway through the session, we are inside of a castle with the floor falling around us. A few enemies on some platforms too. The bugbear barbarian has a reach of 15 feet on his turns and he has a glaive and it can extend his reach by 5 feet. So on one occasion, he positions himself in a way that he can reach one powerful enemy and focuses on it. Next turn, the enemy is moving around. The Barbarian follows and does the same thing. Suddenly, the DM pauses the session, tells the Barbarian that for this night, he can't extend his reach and his glaive can't reach beyond five feet. So basically just destroyed the race and the weapon. At this point, I decided this was my last session. There is no reasoning with whatever this is. But one by one, the others take turns telling him that this isn't fun with the constant banning of every single perk and mechanic. And there are a million ways to deal with these perceived issues. And banning every little thing isn't fun anymore. This isn't supposed to be torturous. He just explodes and goes on a tirade on how every one of us just can't help ourselves, but to min-max every little aspect of our characters, how he can't run a campaign without someone power gaming, then goes on a tirade on how difficult it is to run a campaign without people ruining the fun. Five people disconnect, five people leave the server, five people ban one person. I'm not sure what he expected, us to not use the mechanics of the game. How this guy ran a D&D campaign is beyond me. What's next? Banning putting points in charisma because it gives you higher persuasion checks? Man, we got a theme in this video. First the Matt Mercer effect, now min-maxing. Can it be an issue? Sure, yeah, definitely, it can be. However, that's not this. 
this is just people using the talents that they were given in a smart way. There's no exploits, there's no cheesing. This is people using their subclasses as simple as that. If anything, this should be something the DM loves. I mean, these people are going out of their way to use their abilities to beat encounters that they see as legitimately difficult and having a good time doing so. I mean, what's the end goal of this DM? To kill off all the players to have a TPK? That's not a good thing. At least in most campaigns, it's not a good thing. If the players earn the victory, they earn the victory. Period. Danger, danger, danger. I was home for the summer from college and some old friends invited me to guest in their game for a few sessions. I put it off for a little while at the warning of another friend. The DM was a little weird, but I eventually ran out of excuses and being a non-confrontational individual, I said yes. As I said, this was a while ago, circa 2018 I think, and I was still relatively new to the hobby. I'd only ever played druid and sorcerer, so I rolled up a druid wood elf for this campaign, wrote something of a paragraph of backstory for the DM. I figured I was just a guest, so I wouldn't be focusing on that. At most, I thought I'd make it three sessions before I had to go back to college. I don't remember how I was introduced to the party or what our goal was. All I know is that the party immediately tried to use me and the other female character to seduce our way into the room of some bad guy and that the DM tried to force me to graphically describe what my character was doing with her self while she was flirting with them. I didn't know how to say no, so I said, I don't know how to describe it, and we blessedly moved on. Anyway, we did in fact manage to seduce our way into this guy's room, not with great roles or good roleplay, the DM was just <clears throat> horny. And when he's trying to undress and get with us, the DM was way too descriptive. At this point, we started fighting back, and the rest of the party bursts in. They killed the bad guy, I think, but I honestly don't remember. I know I was heavily shaken in the moment by how graphic the DM was getting with these descriptions. My character makes known her discomfort in being used like this, and says that she is asexual, which is how I was identifying at the time. And the DM looks at me and says that if I was living in the forest alone for 300 years, I must have gotten bored and had a romp with some of the wildlife in or out of my wild shape. Oh, uh, yeah, I picked up my next character, dude. Druid. Easy. I could do Circle of Spores. I think there's really cool flavor in there. Oh, you mean like The Last of Us? Yeah, yeah, like a clicker druid? Oh, that would be so cool. No, you're right. That, that is definitely going to be really, really cool. I just want you to know that... If you play a druid, you need to stay lore accurate. So, you know, I just want you to know and be aware that as a druid, in canon, you definitely just... This time, I did object. No, my character does not practice that. And the DM had the gall to laugh and say that there was no way anyone could go that long without having sex with someone. I dearly wish I'd just gotten up and left then, but I stayed for the rest of the session and went back one more time too. We are not friends anymore, and I now happily play with people who don't force nonsense on my character. I have also learned to say no definitively when I am uncomfortable with a situation, and I've learned that if I want to, I can leave, although I haven't had to since. If I had a moral to the story, it'd be to listen to your friends when they say, hey, that DM is weird, especially when you've been away at college all year. Or alternatively, you could go with don't force sexual nonsense on a character after they say they're asexual, or on anyone for that matter, because that, that is messed up. I have no idea what I just read, and honestly, I don't really want to think about it any further. I am glad that this person learned how to say no. It's a very valuable skill to have. It's easy to look at one of these stories from an outside looking in perspective and go, oh yeah, I would definitely not let that happen. But when you're in the moment, it's a lot harder. Summoning up that courage means a lot, especially since it helps the other people to summon up that courage as well. It only takes one voice to start something, even in something as innocuous as a Dungeons & Dragons game run by that guy. Yeah, and that's going to be it for today's episode of RPG Horror Stories. If you guys enjoyed them, please do leave a like. 
If you want to see more of our content, then you can check out the Tavern Adjacent podcast, where we talk all things TTRPGs, as well as some stuff about myself, too. Who knows? It's linked in the cards. And while you're there, subscribe to Christmas Tavern to get more of our content as it comes out. And finally, if you want to leave your own stories or thoughts, go down into the comments down below. If you can't think of a comment, leave the comment, damn you, Mercer, to let me know you made it to the end of the video. And by the way, if you have your own horror stories, then you can send them to me, linked in the description. But whether you have stories or not, in essence, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Farewell.